I'm ruined. My simp husband turns into psycho after catching me W slash his boss. The one very mistake I made ruined my life and my marriage. I didn't know that this mistake could mess things up for me. My husband caught me with his boss and he didn't think twice before taking out his revenge on me. I take full accountability for my actions, but he just went too far with his revenge. He shouldn't have acted the way he did. His revenge was just too cruel. My husband perfectly planned everything and waited for me to fall right into his trap. I fell for it, and now I'm reaping the consequences. Hi guys, my name is Patricia, and I am a 27-year-old fast food owner. The name of my husband is Michael. He is a 30-year-old business analyst. My husband and I had been married for three years, but unfortunately, we're no longer together. We have known each other for a very long time. Michael was 18 years old when he and his family moved into our neighborhood. At that time, I was 15 years old. Practically, my Sheil and I were childhood friends. I Michael and his family moved into the town at that time because they had transferred his father for work. And so, he wasn't familiar with the neighborhood. At some point then, both of us parents got closer together and made friends. But Michael and I had our own little differences and often argued over little things. Something seemed off with Michael at that time. He was not like the usual kids. He didn't like playing or associating with friends. He was always reading even when it was a holiday. Honestly speaking, Mikkel was an introvert. Few months after Mikkel and his family had moved in, Mikkel and I later got along. We became friends and spent time together whenever his family came over for dinner. We even attended the same high school down to college. We never dated during that period. We were just friends and neighbors. Two years after graduation from college, Michael asked me out. I patiently waited to be his girlfriend. I liked Michael back then, but I didn't tell him because I didn't want to be turned down and also we weren't friends. I accepted and we dated for a year before we finally tied the knot together. The wedding was memorable and I felt like I had made the best decision at that time. We were in love with each other. So guys, a few months after our wedding, everything moved fine and we lived happily. We were an average couple then because we were just trying to figure out something meaningful with our lives. We planned to not take any financial assistance from our parents and we survived each day. At that time, our parents' relationship became stronger because of our union. Despite everything then, Michael treated me nice. We went on regular dates and he also bought me gifts. He never gave me a chance to look outside or even regret marrying him. That even brought us closer together. One year after our wedding, Michael got promoted at his office. He gave professional advice to the company he was working with and also was made a personal assistant to his boss. After Mitchell's promotion, everything went well and we lived happily. I also opened a fast food restaurant with the help of Michael. He supported my business and came over to help me out with work anytime he was work free. It wasn't an easy start. The first few months were challenging, but I overcame all the challenges with the help of Michael. My husband also referred his colleagues to the restaurant to either have breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and they all did. One day while I was at the restaurant sorting out the sales for the day, I got a call from Michael's mom, Trisha. I quickly picked the call and we exchanged our usual greetings. Michael's mom and I were very close. She treated me more like a daughter-in-law. Apparently, Trisha gave birth to Michael and three other boys, and so she took me like the daughter she never had. So guys, after our usual greetings, she told me that she was trying to plan a surprise for Michael Dad's 60th birthday. She told me that she wanted an extra hand and I was the perfect person that would help her carry out the surprise. I was excited and told her how happy I was to help out. So I got off the phone and headed over to the house later that day. We made the necessary arrangement and set out the things we needed for the surprise. Everyone knew about the surprise except for Michael's dad, Dave. Trisha gave out a strict warning to all of us and we all complied. Three days later, it was Michelle's dad's birthday. The surprise really came out good. There were lots of drinks and food to eat. Everyone came with gifts and it was a nice birthday party. Michael and I also gave him a very thoughtful gift. We all had fun. It was indeed a wonderful night and everyone enjoyed themselves. The party ended at 10 p.m. and everyone exited the venue. My husband and I drove home together that night and we headed to bed straight because we had a tired night. 
The next day, I woke up and turned to the other side of the bed, but I didn't find Mikael as usual. He must have woken up early to go to work. I got out of bed and prepared myself to go to the restaurant. I did my morning routine and left home. I arrived at the restaurant and I saw that there were a lot of orders waiting for us. My workers and I got to work and we cleared it out. Not long after we had opened, my husband walked in with his boss, Raphael. His boss wanted to have breakfast at the restaurant that morning. My husband's boss had come over several times to have food at the restaurant. There were times he came and had food with his clients. I was used to having him around. So guys, I took out his order and one of my workers, Kate, served him. My husband also had breakfast with his boss. I sat at a corner and watched them eat. They kept talking about business, and at some point I didn't really understand what they were really discussing at that moment. A few minutes later, they were done and were ready to head out of the restaurant. Raphael left a huge tip for me because of how tasteful the food was. I declined at first, but he seemed persistent. And also, I looked at my husband to see if he was okay with it. But Michael didn't bother, and I collected it. I was very happy, and I thanked him for his generosity. We left the restaurant, and so I walked them to the car. They got into the car and drove off. Then I walked back into the restaurant and continued my work. Two months later, it was our third year wedding anniversary. I got up very early that morning before Michael. Apparently, I had been planning on surprising him. A few minutes later, he got up. We exchanged our greetings and we told ourselves happy anniversary. I was very happy that he remembered despite his busy schedules. We got dressed and we went to our place of work. So guys, I got early from work that day because I wanted to surprise my husband. Of course, it was our third year as a couple. I called him on the phone and told him to come back early, which he assured me he would. I went home and made a nice meal for. Her. I wanted us to have dinner at home. I did everything and lighted the candles. It was a romantic dinner date just for the two of us. Not long after, my husband arrived home, and I waited at the door for him to come. Immediately, he opened the door and I yelled, surprise. He was so happy to see that I had taken time to celebrate our anniversary. We hugged and headed to the dining table. Apparently, my husband got me a gift when he was coming from work. We exchanged our gifts and professed our love to each other. We then proceeded and ate our meal. We cleared the table after we had our meal and went to watch our favorite TV shows. And after a while, I slept off. I couldn't watch the movie until the end because I was very tired. The next morning I woke up and found myself on the bed. Michael must have had a hard time taking me upstairs. I thought to myself and laughed. As usual, my husband had left early to work. I decided not to go to work that day because I wanted to visit my parents. I haven't heard from them for a while then because I was so busy with work that I hardly had time for myself. I called Michael and informed him I would be going to see my parents. He said okay and told me to come back early, which I agreed to. I went to the bathroom and had my bath, got dressed, and left. I didn't bother informing them because I was very sure they were going to be at home. Plus, I wanted my visit to be a surprise. I arrived at my parents' house 15 minutes later. Yes, it was a 15-minute journey. We were that close to each other. I got out of my car and headed to the door. I knocked a few times, but no one opened the door. Everywhere was silent and I wondered what could be wrong. I still remembered the passcode and I went inside. I got in and no one was at home and everything was neatly put in place. I took my phone and called my dad, but his lines were off. At that moment, I was scared and had bad thoughts running through my mind. I called my mom and after a few rings, she picked the phone. I asked her if everything was okay and why they weren't at home, but she said all was fine and told me not to bother myself about anything. Apparently, they went to visit a friend of theirs a few miles away from the neighborhood. So, guys, I was happy that nothing happened. Before I got off the phone with my mom, I told her I would wait for them to come back, and so I waited. A few hours later, they arrived home. I was very happy to see them, and we chatted for a while before I left and headed back home. By the time I arrived home, it was a few minutes past six, and Michael hadn't come back at that time. I called him, and he told me he was a few minutes away from home. I went inside and freshened up and went downstairs. I thought about the things me and my mom had chatted about, and I felt happy. 
I had really missed them. Sometimes I feel like I haven't done enough for them. I was reminiscing about the fun I had with my mom when Michael walked in. I was startled at first because he didn't knock on the door as usual. Maybe I must have forgotten to lock it. We greeted each other and we asked ourselves about our day before he went upstairs to change. Immediately I left to set his dinner and I continued with what I was doing. A few minutes later, he came down to eat his meal and went back to the room. I was very curious about it because it was unlike him. And so I got up and asked him if everything was okay. He told me that he was just tired from the day's work and so he came back to lie down. Honestly speaking, at that time he looked very tired. I also joined him in bed and we rested for the night. Michael's behavior continued for a couple of weeks and I was becoming fed up with his constant mood swings. I decided to pressure him into telling me what was wrong with him. After much persuasion, he told me that he had been overworked by his boss for the past few months. And I was very surprised because he had told me they were not very busy at that time of the year. He then explained to me about them expanding their business and all. I saw the work was taking a huge toll on my husband and I decided I was going to do something about it. The following day, I made up my mind that I was going to speak to Michael's boss, Raphael. I know I made the decision to do that on my own, but I needed to do something about it because my husband was grinding himself to the ground and I knew he was not gonna say anything to his boss because he loved what he did, i.e. his work. I was in the restaurant two days later when Michael called me about a work trip he was going on at the last minute and I saw it as an opportunity for me to go pay his boss, Raphael, a visit. I knew I was doing the right thing because it was for the welfare of my husband. I quickly finished what I was doing and I left for their office. I got there and every time I come here, I am very much in awe about the organization of the offices. I told his assistant I was here to see her boss, but she told me I didn't have an appointment. I tried explaining to her that I know him, but she couldn't listen to me. I gave up hope and I was about to leave when I saw Raphael coming out from his office with a man. I quickly ran to him and I told him about how I wanted to see him and I didn't have an appointment. He apologized to me and he ushered me into his office. I sat down and I got straight to the point with him. I told him about Michael's recent poor health and how he had been overworking himself lately. Raphael put me at ease about everything and he told me he was going to cut back Michael's working hours. At that point, I became very scared thinking that I may have jeopardized his work, but he quickly told me that cutting back his hours doesn't mean Michael was going to lose his job. I felt relieved because I knew Michael was going to be upset if he found out that I paid his boss a visit without his knowledge. I told Raphael not to mention my visit to Michael. He agreed, and he walked me out of his office with his hand on my lower back. I felt some type of way, because he shouldn't have done that because I was the wife of his employee and I thought they had some sort of friendship. After leaving the office, I went back home and called Michael. We talked for some time, and I found out he was feeling much better, and also he was extending his trip for a little while because his boss gave him time to rest. But I asked why he couldn't rest at our home. He replied and said he needed to be away from the city for a few weeks. I agreed to it because it can get really intense with the work they do. We said our goodbyes and I got into bed. Things were moving swiftly, guys. My husband was fine where he was and my business was moving forward. I was at the restaurant when Raphael came in with a group of men in suits. I assumed they were from his work. I asked someone to take their other and I continued with my work some hours later. I thought I should leave early and go see Trisha for a while. I was about to leave when I saw Raphael still in the restaurant, but that time he was alone. I went over to say hello, and he asked me to join him for a drink, which I accepted because I didn't want to seem rude to him. We talked about random things, and I discovered that Raphael was actually a very interesting person. He told me how he worked so hard from an early age, and because he was from a rich family, he had to work extra hard. I also told him about how Michael had worked his way up to be where he is today. I also told him it was one of the things I admired about my husband. I admired his dedication. I finished up my drink and I told Raphael I was meeting Michael's mom for dinner and I had to leave. He offered to drive me since it was late and I accepted. We talked on the way and I saw that I had misjudged Raphael because he was actually a very funny and easygoing guy behind the suits and the serious face he carried. 
he was so easy to talk to. He dropped me off and we said our goodbyes. I greeted Trisha and she kept on saying she hadn't seen me in months. I knew she exaggerated a lot, but months? We laughed over it and we talked about Michael's recent trip and she had asked me how I was doing without him. I told her I was coping fine. We ate and we gossiped for a little while before I went back home. When I got home, I went straight to bed and I made a mental note to talk to my parents the following day. I woke up the next day ready to get to work when Michael called me that his boss was coming over to the house to get some particular documents he had left behind. I knew that I was already going to be running late for work and I decided to wait for Raphael. I was finishing up my breakfast when I heard the doorbell. I knew it was Raphael and I invited him in. I gave him the documents and he handed me my pair of earrings I left in his car last night. I thanked him and I was about to lead him to the door when he begged me to make a cup of coffee for him. I agreed to do so because he was really a nice person and he was just asking for me to do little. We continued to bond over the coffee and Raphael kept flirting with me and at first I never saw it as anything serious but it kept coming. He could tell me I was beautiful and Michael was lucky to have me. It never meant anything to me and I decided to overlook it. A few days later, Raphael kept visiting my restaurant and he kept on flirting with me. There were days he could enter the restaurant and sit for hours watching me work and waiting for me to finish my work. In those days I found the sweet side of Raphael. I got into the restaurant one morning and I saw a bunch of flowers waiting for me on my desk. I looked at the card and discovered it was from Raphael. It brightened my day and a few minutes later I received a call from Raphael and we talked and he made me laugh throughout our conversation. I had to end the call because I was getting another call from my husband. I spoke to my husband not feeling guilty because I thought what was going on between me and Raphael was not that important and there was no need for me to worry him over it. I talked to Michael about when he was coming back because I missed him, to which he said he had returned in a week's time. I was very excited because finally he was coming back and I was not going to be lonely again. A day later, Raphael asked how long it was since I went out for dinner, and I couldn't remember to which he suggested we go out for a friendly dinner. I accepted because I thought it was harmless and all. And since it was going to take a few days before Michael returned, I decided to take him up on his offer. I got dressed and Raphael picked me up. I didn't know how he knew my favorite restaurant, but I was happy to be there. We ate and talked for a while. With Raphael, it was very easy to communicate because he always puts you at ease. I checked my time and I discovered time had passed and there were only a few people remaining at the restaurant. At that point, I was very tipsy. Raphael offered to drop me home, but I had to decline because it was really late and I didn't want to be driven for a long time. I told him to find me a hotel to sleep for the night and I could go home in the morning, but he suggested I could sleep in his guest room. I accepted and he drove us to his house. We got to his house and I knew I was tipsy because I couldn't see properly, and Raphael helped me change my clothes. One thing led to the other, and we started kissing. I didn't know what was going on in my head, but I wanted it to happen, and that was the last thing I remember, before everything went blank. I woke up the next morning with a mild headache to see that I was in a strange place. Before I could make out where I was, I heard the voice of my husband, and the next thing was him standing at the door, looking at me horribly. I turned to the left and I saw Raphael naked on the bed. I saw a lot of pain in Michael's eyes and I knew I was in trouble. I left the room without a word and I tried to get dressed and run after him, but Raphael held me back and told me to allow him to be for some time. I felt like it was not a good idea and I got dressed quickly and went looking for Michael only to see he had left. I looked for a cab and went home looking for him, but he was not there. I kept on trying to reach Michael, but he was not answering me. And some days later, Raphael came by to the restaurant and I asked him if he knew where Michael had gone. But he didn't know I was getting irritated at that point because I wanted him to come face me and let us talk things through. A few days later, I woke up ready to start my day and I decided not to think about everything for once and put myself first. I got to work but my restaurant was closed. I was shocked because my employees are always early to work and we don't close the restaurant at that hour of the morning. I got a paper served to me saying I was no longer the owner of my business because it had been sold. I thought it was a very good joke and I started laughing. 
because I didn't see how it was possible. I decided to call Michael because he was the only one who could understand how I was feeling, but I couldn't reach him. I called Raphael, and he came as soon as he could. I gave him the papers with my hands shaking. Then Raphael told me after that Michael, being the legal owner of my restaurant, had sold it. I didn't want to believe him at first because I knew Michael wasn't that cruel. But I remembered what I did to him, and I couldn't hold my tears. My whole life's work had been thrown into the drain by Michael. That was the cruelest thing to do to anyone. I got home to see my things were outside with Michael standing at the door with the divorce papers. I begged him to listen to me, and I tried explaining to him that the house was mine too. But he said he had bought the house in his name. That's all he did to me. I can't believe he turned out to be a ruthless man. I'm still trying to process all that he did to me. Update. I've seen the comments, and I must say that you all are really cruel. None of you wanted to leave any stone unturned, and you made sure you crushed my pride. I guess I deserve it all. I cannot believe that I've ended up as a divorced woman who has lost everything. I thought things would charge, and I'd get back everything I've lost, but nothing like that happened. It's all gone, and it's as a result of my stupidity. At that moment, everything came crashing down on me. I had lost my restaurant, which I built with some much sweet, and I also lost my marriage, and I was homeless. It became clear to me that Michael was a cruel person, who never thought of anybody but himself. This is everything he did to me, guys. I don't think I can ever recover from it. But I guess karma dealt with me. My name is Carla, age 37. I have been married to Thomas, age 41. My husband and I have had a boring marriage. We were good to each other because we treated each other as friends. There were times when we went about not seeing each other due to our busy schedules for days. There were never any arguments about anything in particular between us. I think us being busy was what kept our marriage without falling for the longest time. I was a nurse and he was a salesman. We both had erratic work hours and schedules, which made it very hard for us to find time for each other. Having kids was a topic we both dreaded. Being a nurse for kids was more than enough for me to be scared of having kids of my own. I would encounter kids with all sorts of complications, which hardened my resolve not to have kids of my own. Thomas had been quite understanding about it as he knew that having kids would add to the expense and we were not ready to take up extra expenses. We both mutually agreed on not having any kids, which upset both of our folks, but it was what it was. We were content with our decision and focused on building a strong foundation for our relationship. We filled our lives with adventures, hobbies, and quality time together, cherishing the freedom and flexibility that not having children allowed us. Our friends and family eventually came to understand and respect our choice, realizing that happiness can be found in different ways for different people. Very soon it got boring and we started living our separate lives. In a few years, we became distant, and then Thomas did something unexpected that changed our lives forever. Thomas and I had very busy work schedules, which led to us seeing each other less than we previously did. Thomas had to make enough sales to keep his job and also manage our mortgage. Due to COVID and its after effects, I would mostly be tired after coming home, so sex was out of the question. There were times we would go about 15 days or even a month without sex. I would feel guilty about not being able to do my duties as a wife, but then again, nothing can beat sleep deprivation. Our days together mostly consisted of Thomas convincing me to have sex and me telling him how hard I had worked all day and just wanted to rest in peace and quiet. It was the same thing again and again. It was as if even our off days had a routine of their own. It was not always like this though. When we started dating, we were so madly in love with each other that I would sneak Thomas to one of our empty lab rooms and make out with him. I don't know what happened as the years passed. The spark was lost and we mostly focused on our careers and less on each other. We became consumed by our professional ambitions, prioritizing work over our relationship. The constant hustle and bustle left little room for romance and intimacy, causing the initial passion to fade away. We were finally free to get some time together with each other when I had a few days off and Thomas had a long weekend to himself without any sales. So we decided to live a little the way we did when we were dating. We made plans and went out with friends. We were drinking and talking nonsense. We had about four rounds of beer 
and were half drunk. As we were on the fifth round, Thomas said in front of everyone that it had been almost two months since we had sex, and he wasn't expecting to have sex for at least a year at the rate we were going. Everyone started laughing, including me. But deep down, I was angry at how he could reveal such intimate information in front of all our friends. We were trying to mend our relationship, but Thomas and his loud mouth were not helping at all. I decided that this cannot go unpunished. I definitely did not want him to spill any more bedroom secrets in the future. I knew I had to address the issue privately with Thomas, expressing my discomfort and setting boundaries regarding our personal matters. It was important for us to establish a mutual understanding and respect each other's privacy, ensuring that our intimate details remained between us. We went home, and as usual, he tried to have sex with me. I pushed him away and told him that he was not going to get any sex at least for a year from now, just like he had predicted. He tried to reason with me, but I pushed him away and went to bed. He was too tired and drunk, so he went to sleep immediately. I was on leave for the next few days, and every day, he tried to convince me to have sex with him. I did feel bad, but every time I was about to agree, I would remember what he did at the club. This instantly angered me, and I would give a vague excuse to get myself out of the situation. This went on for three days that I was on leave. On the fourth day, he came in and walked directly to the bedroom. I was startled by his sudden intrusion and immediately sat up in bed, demanding to know what he was doing. His expression was filled with remorse as he apologized for his past behavior and admitted that he had been seeking forgiveness. I was determined to teach him a lesson so that he does not repeat the same mistake again. It was strange that he did not even greet me. He showered and got ready. He smelled really nice, but I did not want to give in to the temptation. He asked me how he looked, to which I replied that he looked swoon-worthy, but he was still not going to get any sex. He smiled and said that he got it covered. I assumed that he might have worked hard to sweep me off my feet and apologize. I decided to get myself ready and be presentable when it happened. I showered and wore my best-looking dress, which enhanced my features. He looked puzzled at my sudden enthusiasm. I decided to act as if I had my own stuff to do to keep up the shock value. I was almost ready when the doorbell rang and he rushed to open the door. There was a woman at the door, looking incredibly hot, who winked at him. He took her straight to our room and closed the door behind them. My heart sank as I stood there, feeling a mix of betrayal and disappointment. It became clear that his apology was never going to come, and I realized that I deserved someone who would truly sweep me off my feet and value my presence. I followed them and saw that the room was not locked. I knocked, but there was no answer, so I decided to barge in. I had to know what was going on in my house. I saw him shirtless, and the woman who walked in was taking her dress off. I asked him what all this was, and he said like he mentioned, he got everything covered. He was fine that I did not want to have sex, as he now realized that he did not need me to have sex. He found this really interesting proposal and met this woman who was willing to be his companion tonight. I was taken aback by his nonchalant way of telling me all this as if it was all such a common occurrence. He did not even care about how I would feel about all this. He said that he had things to do, and if I did not mind, close the door while leaving them alone. They continued undressing, and I did not know what to do, so I closed the door and went into the guest bedroom. I couldn't sleep the entire night as I could hear sounds and whispers from our bedroom. I tried to put my ear to the wall to listen to what they were up to. I don't know if he was really enjoying himself or just moaning too loudly to make me jealous. Maybe it was all just an act and nothing was actually happening there. I couldn't be sure until I saw it for myself. I he came to the dinner table in the morning to get his coffee. I was already sitting there waiting for him as his companion had left about an hour ago. I had been waiting for the past hour, dreading to go to the bedroom as I was not ready to witness him naked after spending a night with another woman. He came and kissed me on my forehead as if nothing happened. He smiled at me and said that he had a wonderful time last night and asked me if I had a good sleep. Really, was he being serious right now? How could he even ask me that after almost causing me to have a mental breakdown? I just kept staring at him in disbelief, looking at him being so casual about it. There was no guilt or shame that he felt after what he did last night. 
He got ready as usual and went to work as if it was normal to sleep with another woman in the bedroom when your wife is right in front of you. I went to work but obviously could not focus on what I was doing. My job required me to be present more than 100% as people's lives depended on my actions. I decided to leave early and brainstorm a little on how to handle this issue with my husband. There was no use staying at the hospital when my mind was running all over, which could lead to serious blunders from my end. I went home and started thinking of where it all went wrong, that he had to take such a step and not even feel guilty about it. The more I thought, the more it became clearer about the night at the club where it all started. I recalled how he had been distant and unresponsive that night, spending most of his time engrossed in conversation with a mysterious woman. It was then that I realized the potential catalyst for his actions. Perhaps there was more to this situation than met the eye. As I delved deeper into my thoughts, I couldn't help but wonder if there were underlying issues in our relationship that we had failed to address. I decided to make up for it and apologize to Thomas for not bothering about his feelings for so long. No one other than me had any right to sleep with my husband. I prepared the bed and the bathroom to make it smell romantic. I lit candles and played soft music to enhance the romantic mood. I waited for Thomas to come home to the surprise. The doorbell rang and I checked myself in the mirror before opening the door. There he was, half drunk and with a new woman. He just pushed me aside and made his way to the bedroom with her. They went in and locked the door. The next morning, Thomas came and kissed me. He even thanked me for understanding his needs and decorating the bedroom for him and his friend last night. My mouth was wide open at his way of processing things. I was not doing all of that for him to sleep with a random woman. I think he knew me well enough to not come to such a stupid conclusion. Was he just trying to push me farther away by doing all of this? I did not really understand why he had to behave this way. And tonight I had decided that it would be a battle to regain my control over Thomas. He was my husband, and there was no way I would let things slip out of my hand. He wants sex, so sex is what he would get, but from me and not from anyone else. I was fully prepared for Thomas to show up and give him an ultimatum for his actions. I waited and slept on the couch itself. He never showed up. I woke up at six in the morning and gave him a call. He picked it up and I could tell that he was completely out of it. I was asking him where he was and if I should come pick him up. I could hear faint voices of a girl beside him. I tried to ask random things just to listen to the person beside him. He told me that he was fine and would be home for lunch. Before he hung up, I could make out that the person beside him was Karen, who was one of our mutual friends and who always had eyes for Thomas. I was devastated knowing that now he had started sleeping around with friends. How could he not think of what people would talk about us once all of this came to light? Was he so desperate for sex that he would be ready to sleep around with any person who shows even a tiny bit of interest in him? And how could Karen do such a thing? She was my friend after all. Even if Thomas was the one who suggested it, could she not have the sense to deny it? I couldn't jump to conclusions just by a few whispers. I decided to drive to Karen's house to confirm it. On my way, I kept praying for it not to be true. I had scenarios running in my head about it being true and imagining them making out. I shook my head and tried to focus on the road. I reached and there in the corner was Thomas's car. Without thinking, I went and rang the bell. Karen opened it and I could tell by her expression that I was the last person she wanted to see. I went inside without a word and saw Thomas sleeping in her bed with barely any clothes. Anger is not even the word that could describe what I was feeling. I snatched away the quilt and pushed Thomas to wake up. He got up with a start and looked at me. He hugged me and was going back to sleep when I asked him to see where he was. He opened his eyes and looked at Karen and then at me. He looked at the condition he was in and understood what must have happened last night. He told me that he never knew Karen was so good at sex. I mean, really? I started throwing things at him, which he dodged successfully. He stopped me and asked me what was wrong. Could he not know what was wrong? I was not his girlfriend anymore for him to toy around with me. I demanded an explanation, and he said that he understands my point of not always being available for sex, and he respects it. He doesn't want to burden me with it, so he found a solution. 
This helps him with his sexual needs and does not even put pressure on me for having sex with him. According to him, it was a win-win situation for the both of us. He told me to calm down and think about it. I was fuming with anger and told him that he could enjoy all the sex he wants to with Karen or any other woman because I don't care anymore. I was done putting up with his nonsense and now I didn't want to carry on with it. I gave Karen a disappointing look and walked out of the door slamming it shut. I sat in my car and started crying. How could my life turn out this way? Thomas was the most responsible and loyal person I had known. How could he sleep with so many women and not even feel sorry about it? I was lost for words. I am writing all this sitting in my car as I don't think I am in the right frame of mind to drive my car. All of the good times that I had with Thomas keep flashing in front of my eyes as I am still in denial regarding the treatment Thomas is letting me go through. I would request you to give me suggestions on how to get my life back on track after such a fiasco. Update. Here is an update to what has happened ever since Thomas has been getting every random girl home whenever I was free. I left the house that I shared with Thomas, just like a few of you suggested. I started focusing on myself and living my life the way I wanted to. I went out with my friends over the weekend to a club and saw Thomas kissing a girl not older than 21 on the dance floor. It was very awkward for both me and my friends to see Thomas this way. I thought he would ignore us, but he came to us and sat with us. He even joked about finding other avenues if you are not happy with your partner and not feel guilty about it. I was sitting right there, so how could he openly say things like that? I was done being patient and decided to hit the dance floor. I scouted a young guy myself and started dancing with him. I got close to the young guy to show Thomas that he was not the only one who was capable of doing all of this. It was like we were competing against each other to show that we didn't care. We could see the jealousy in each other's body language, but denied that we wanted to be together. The entire night we tried too hard to irk each other and show that we could live happily without each other's support. The next day I got up with a throbbing headache. I had way too many drinks. I recollected last night's events and saw a spark of anger in Thomas's eyes when I was dancing with another guy. He did care about who I was with. It was just that he was angry and wanted me to acknowledge it. I sure as hell was not happy seeing Thomas with anyone else. We were living separately and we both knew that it was all temporary. We had been married to each other for 15 years and knew that by now, we kind of developed a bond that we couldn't share with anyone else. Even though I had been living separately, never once did the thought of divorce cross my mind. I knew how to make things right. I decided to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Thomas about it. I told him that I truly loved him and would do anything to make sure that he stops behaving this way towards me. I even agreed to have an open marriage with him if he is suffering so much without sex that I have not been able to provide. I know you guys are going to judge me for opening my marriage and all that, trust me. It does not make me happy, but I guess this is the only way I would be able to keep Thomas by my side. There is nothing else I can think of that can save my marriage. Many of you might be disappointed by my decision, but this is the only way out as I see it. Update. It has been a week since I decided to forget everything Thomas had done in order to spite me. We have started afresh and things have been very smooth between us. I must say that the once in a while appearance of a new face in the bedroom is an idea that I am still not used to, but it was not as bad as I thought. I am actually glad about the idea of an open marriage as it takes off the pressure of having sex with Thomas when I don't want to. The best part is that he gets a girl, they have sex and she leaves. There is no emotional dependence or any drama that I would have to deal with. It is better than Thomas having an affair and asking me for a divorce. Right now, I am truly happy in my marriage, where I have the controls and I can make it work in my favor. Thomas and I mutually decided on the girl that he could bring home, and I would have my alone time that day with myself. The next morning would be just me and Thomas together working as a team to better our marriage. I wish we could have done this sooner so that we would have had a much more beautiful marriage all this while. And I know that most of you might be disappointed by my decision to stay with Thomas, even after sleeping around with so many women. I should have separated and found a better man, but trust me, it is better to live with the devil you know than go searching for a new unknown one. As long as Thomas sticks to his promise of only sex and no emotional connection with all of his companions, I think it would all be okay. 
I know for a fact that no other woman would be able to put up with Thomas and his weird demands if they would have to live with him. I guess that is how I am going to proceed with my marriage going forward. I take a keen interest in choosing the girl that Thomas would be having fun with and gives me enough control on the situation. This also sends a message to the women that I am willing with all of this and Thomas would do things only by taking my approval. Even I would have fun once in a while with a man of my choice after seeking Thomas's approval. It was only right if both of us reaped the benefits of this open marriage. This has opened a new avenue of happiness which does not require us to feel pressured or burdened to keep each other happy. We could delegate the sex part to others and when we needed to have a heartfelt conversation, we always had each other to fall back on. We were enjoying this phase of our lives which helped us focus both on our careers and also on things that needed focusing. I thank all of you for being a part of my journey from a disastrous marriage to a successful one. I would not have been able to keep sane and do all of this without your opinions and suggestions. Thank you so much for sticking with me all this time and making sure that I make the right decisions. I would suggest anyone going through a rough patch in their marriage, especially due to sexual issues, to give open marriage a go. I understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it might just be the right thing to improve your marriage. If the sole problem is time for sex, then definitely try it out and see how it goes. The disclaimer is to make sure that there is no emotional involvement whatsoever to make sure that you always have an upper hand.